watched another Altman film. Oh yeah. Yeah, and uh, uh, not one of the... Well, this is probably the one that's acknowledged as sort of his uh, underrated classic. Oh yeah. So it's not as big as Nashville, McCain, Mrs. Miller or um, The Long Goodbye. It's uh, Free Women. Have you? Oh, I've heard of Free Women. Free Women. Yeah. Yeah, three, the one... Um, three Women. Three Women, yeah. The one that's famous having um, Shelley Duvall and Sissy Space back in. The most, the most 70s <laughs> partnership ever. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so the basic plot of the film... It's really weird, it's very dreamlike. It's more like a David Lynch or um, Bergman sort of persona era film. Oh yeah. So the very basic <coughs> plot is that Sissy Spacek works in like a... It's like an old folks home, but it does a lot of like care for them. So she's like a nurse in a oh, yeah. sort of retirement community. So she looks after old people. There's a lot of scenes of like old people like uh, in pools and stuff with her like shepherding them around. And then Sissy Spacek starts working there and um, Sissy Spacek sort of becomes her sort of protege and best friend. Sissy Sp um, Shelley Duvall's character is sort of a kind of sort of like spinstery. She's always asking men around, but no one likes her. No, uh, you know that. Like, like, like Shelley Duvall in real life. Oh, burn! <laughs> Shelley Duvall. What, what do you have against Shelley Duvall? She's a great actress. No, I've got nothing against Shelley Duvall. Yeah. I don't think she's ugly as sin, but... Oh! No, no, I, don't, yeah. I, I don't actually think that. Like, I, I do a bit, but... I don't know. I think she's quite attractive in a 70s sort of way. I don't think she is. Oh, All right, we'll have to disagree. What do you think of Sheila Duvall based on her appearance? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Pip. Uh, as an actor, she's great. Yeah? I mean, she's Yeah, she's great. Yeah. <laughs> I don't really know about her, uh, like, just base looks, but... I don't know. I think, I think she's pretty... She's not the... I think she's fairly attractive, but anyway, so, um, she's this space act, yeah, she plays yeah, she, she, She's definitely unattractive. <laughs> she, no, she isn't. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm joking. Though. Uh, but, um, <laughs> subjective. <laughs> anyway, she plays a sort of spinster kind of woman, always trying to ask men around, and then she sort of, mo city space that moves in with her, mm. and they start a very, very bizarre relationship where city space act starts copying her and trying to sort of become her. And then about a little bit like Persona. A bit like Persona. It's, it's very reminiscent of Persona. Yeah. And then halfway through, Sissy's... Like, um... SS. SS. We we'll call her SS. The S S the SS. The SS. Uh, <laughs> Sissy, Sissy Space. And then uh, Shelley Duvall has, like, a right go at Sissy Spacek. And then Sissy Spacek jumps into a pool. And he's in a coma. And when she comes out, she's basically become Shelley Duvall's character. Oh, right. And it's a... It's very plot light. Like the basic, the film is more about atmosphere and mood. It's almost like a. It's it is basically a horror film. It's set in a universe which is sort of everyone is against Shelley Duvall. It's told mainly from her point of view, so everyone's against her. It's very paranoid. It's concerned with a lot of metaphysical stuff where characters sort of become other characters. Yeah. Just through sort of this sort of trans not not a physical transformation, but in a sort of spiritual way. Yeah, yeah. The third woman in the film is a sort of abused wife who hangs around in a bar. She's not in it anywhere near as much. She's like in it about ten percent of the film. So uh, you've got this other character, and it's all about how these women sort of become each other. It's a very weird film. It's it's directed in a truly odd way. Like it does a lot of the style of standard Altman thing, like um, where the camera sort of just moves around the frame like that. Where the, the frame doesn't, nothing moves within the frame. His camera just sort of roams around, mm -hmm. and it's got that dense sound design that all of the other ones do. Oh, like in dialogue um, and yeah. yeah. Like, there's a great one where um, it's um, Shelley Duvall's character. I think it's called Millie. Oh no, she's called Millie Vanilli. <laughs> She's called Minnie, I think, and then oh. Sissy Space, that's called Millie, I think. Something like that. They're, they're, it's very weird. They're very similar names. There's a lot of stuff, again, about duality. But she's talking to... Um, she's inviting people to a party at her house, and then she walks off, and then within the overlapping dialogue, you can hear them talk about her as she walks off. Very well done dialogue. Also, this, this film's just been released on Arrow Blu-ray. Has it? Yeah. What's it called? It's called Free Women. Oh, excellent. It's a very, it's a great film. I'd recommend getting it. But the, um, there's a bit where it's got a sort of 30-minute talk with a film historian. And it features some of the campest pictures of Robert Altman you can find. What that? No, there's, there's one where it's, um, he's giving, <clears throat> basically he's at this pool scene, stood, sat in the, stood in the pool, and he's wearing 
sort of like chinos, no shirt, a bla a um, cummerbund, and a sailor hat. <laughs> and he's giving direction like that. Oh, it's very weird. But yeah, this this is a weird um, time in Altman's career because he'd had all these big hits, but he was. Um, uh, it's sort of like the beginning of the end of the period where he could do like make big mainstream films that would cross over. Like anything on a big budget, yeah. Yeah. Like um apparently what happened with this film is he, he went into the Alan Ladd Junior's oh, office yeah, yeah. and said, I've had a dream and I want to film idea like a screenplay based on it. And then Alan <laughs> I, Ladd I always like it when, when directors go into pitch stuff to studio like I've, I've had a dream. But apparently Alan Ladd Junior just said that's fine, just keep it under a million <laughs> And obviously in the 70s, that's like the equivalent of about 10 million or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, he just said, oh yeah, that's fine. Do whatever you want. We've got Star Wars. And now that's, that made us a lot of money. Just do whatever you want. Apart after Star Wars, Altman was given like... None of his films were big crossover hits. But he was given the ability to do whatever he wanted by 20th Century Fox. As oh, long yeah. as he made small budgeted films. Because Star Wars was such a big hit. Yeah, he made like a film called The Wedding and other films like that. That were very uncommercial, but they just didn't care. Like, none of them made any money. And I doubt that Free Women made any money. But, yeah, it's based on, like, a dream he had. I mean, can you imagine doing that now? Like, I don't know, whoever the Altman is now. I don't know, Wes Anderson. I had a dream, can I have 60 million? Get out. <laughs> Get out, yeah. Is, is it based on a pre-existing franchise? <laughs> is, is it based on an old comic book? I'd have loved to have seen uh, Altman direct Star Wars episode 7, actually. <laughs> it was just nothing but overlapping dialogue and, like, um, scenes where people would just Spall, stood around. Spalling cast of hundreds and... Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't that have been interesting? Yeah. <laughs> it's just essentially Nashville in space. He could have made a whole... Yeah. He could have made a whole scene about a cantina sequence. Yeah. Like, just just, just that, like, two, two hours of that. That would have been absolutely amazing. Yeah. But, yeah, so, Free Women... Um, it's a very weird film. It's so it's so dreamlike in its plotting. Like again, characters becoming other ones, and he uses that like roving camera work to a completely different effect. Like in Nashville, it's to show like the whole the wide spectrum of characters, and in McCabe and Mrs. Miller, it's to show the town being built around the characters. In this film, it's to suggest sort of that there are things at the corner of the frame out to get the characters. It's using a much more haunting sort of freaky way it's also got a really great atonal score oh yeah which you don't find in many Altman films obviously normally the, the score is done uh, either from pre-existing music like the Leonard Cohen songs in McCabe and Mrs Miller or it's something really clever like in like in Long Goodbye where it's different versions of Long Goodbye yes, yes. That's, that's brilliant that, that, that's it? brilliant yeah. John, yeah John Williams used to be like one of the most experimental composers of the 70s and then he became like ultra conservative what well, do you expect after stuff. all that money yeah just truckloads of it, and I never need to make a film again. I think the best use of music I've heard uh, in a film is probably from like an Altman film, like Long Goodbye, and uh, I love the use of songs in Nashville. Oh yeah, they're just it's just perfect. The best scene in that is when he plays I'm Easy. Yeah, and yeah. And he moves yeah. around every single character. And you you, you think, uh, well, my character's thinking, oh, that's he's singing that song about me. Yeah. Um, and it can be taken in a slightly different way for each character. Yeah. Uh, I also love uh, the guy that sings that ultra. American anthem at the start of the film. Oh, yeah. yeah. 200 years. 200 years. <laughs> and there's, there's a hippie playing piano. Yeah, that was great. No, I, I, I adore Nashville. Yeah. I love Nashville. But yeah, Free Women isn't as good as that. It's in the top 10 Altman films. Okay. It's very good. It's just it hasn't got that sort of sprawling... Basically, this film is more... Instead of being about America, like his best films are... The, the film is more about just this psychological landscape the characters exist in. Yeah. I, it's a really good theory on the documentary that, about, that accompanies it. It's about sort of the role of women at that time. Like, one of them is an abused wife. One of them is sort of a sort of spinster who no one sort of gets along with. And the other one is essentially like a child mm. who's sort of being indoctrinated into this adult world. And it's like, the, the ending is really weird. There's a bizarre scene that even Altman thinks goes on, is, is like, it was a wrong move. There's like a ten minute, you'd never get away with this in anything other than the 70s, there's a ten minute ambiguous dream sequence, <laughs> which is full of, it's really funny actually, it's, it's, all, it's very dated, but it sort of works in the context of the film. What, what, it's so weird, I can't even describe Is it quite Zardoz-esque? To, to, to spoil the film, so, like, the, the one who's abused has a miscarriage, like, she's giving birth but the baby dies. Mm -hmm. Shelley Duvall. Shelley Duvall 
has like blood on her hands and then she sort of like pours it on Sissy Spacek's face sort oh. of thing. It's really creepy. And then there's like a weird dream sequence which is full of scenes from earlier or deleted scenes with a sort of woo sort of sound. It's really, it's dated but it's good. Okay. It's a bit, it's a really strange film because it's like watching a David Lynch film directed by Robert Altman. Yeah. So you've got obviously Lynch's sort of, you know, creepy thing but you've also got the sort of like comedic elements of an Altman film and overlapping dialogue. It's, it works really well. It's still a 10 out of 10 film but it's really strange. So it's like one of the creepiest, most like horrific films ever. There's no real horror in the film. It just it's such an atmosphere of dread and well, that's how terror it's in the film. Shopping basket. Yeah, but like, um, and then like after this sort of bizarre ten minute dream sequence ends, the characters have sort of assumed different roles. Like uh, they all live on um on the ranch that um, the abused woman has, and she's the abused woman is like the grandmother. Sissy Space acts like the daughter, and then um, Shella Duvall's like the mother. Oh. It's, it's such a strange film. It's impossible to describe, but it's definitely worth watching. It has such an odd Sounds atmosphere. Really yeah. You, I think you'd like it. Yeah, it's yeah. really good. It's not as good as, I say, like, you know, his masterpieces. But it's, I mean, it, the, the film apparently, they even have it on the box. It's most famous for beating Star Wars as Ebert's best film of 77. Oh, really? Yeah. And it, like, uh, it was massively acclaimed at the time. But um, another reason why this film was unknown for ages, and why it's only, it, this is the first home release ever in the ah, UK. I was going to ask that, yeah. Because um, the mu- what happened is all these films that he made afterwards, like A Wedding and I can't remember the other ones, they all had um, music rights issues. Oh, right, yeah, yeah. Apparently they were released on DVD without any of the music being cleared, oh. so they instantly became out of print. Yeah. And, like, um, they got sued over it and things, so obviously, you know, like... Um, they weren't going to release them anytime soon, but now, but now Arrow have stepped in rights. and they've released Three Women. Hopefully, they'll release the other ones. But yeah, Three Women, definitely check it out. It's Altman doing something different and new. Um, he's like a genre. This is the only one as well that can't be put into like a sort of genre kind of thing. Like, you've got Western, yeah, musical, yeah, yeah. Um, noir. It's one of the few that can't like, be put into Because throughout the 70s, Altman was kind of famous for his Rudder films, which were like undermining of yeah, classic genre American pastiches. genres. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So like the, the hard-boiled thriller in Long Goodbye, the... Um, Western. Western, yeah, and McCabe and Mrs. Miller. And that Nashville is more like an undermining of... Musicals, musicals really. Musicals, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. All American musicals at that, yeah. Yeah. Um, if this one's a bit more... This one's more ambiguous, yeah. yeah. Okay. It's probably his most difficult film, really. And it, yeah, it's not it's not like MASH just what MASH and all. I've not seen MASH. MASH is great, you should watch yeah, MASH. I've not seen MASH. So, some of it's dated. But uh, MASH is definitely a classic, yeah. But 10 out of 10. Watch, uh, watch Free Women. It's great.